Hi and welcome to the last of our exam prep videos for probability. This video covers questions on contingency tables and the counting principle. First, questions on contingency tables. In this first question, we are given a table with information summarizing results from a survey and we are being asked to determine these probabilities. Pause the video now to give this a read through and then give it a go. So if we consider a person selected at random, we find the probability of them being a boy who plays tennis by following down the boy's column here and along here for plays tennis and seeing where they overlap, which means the probability is 20 over the total number of learners, which is 80, and this simplifies to a quarter. 1.2, the probability that the learner is a girl given that they play tennis. Well, here our denominator isn't the total number of learners, but the total number of learners that play tennis. And so then the probability of selecting a girl who plays tennis is 16 over 36. And this simplifies to 4 over 9. 1.3, to find the probability of a boy or somebody who plays tennis, we look here for the total number of boys and here for the total number who play tennis and add them together. But these 20 boys are in both totals and so we need to subtract 20 from the sum and we then divide all of that by 80 and the probability is 61 over 80. Question 2 on contingency tables. Here you are given a table with unknown values and you are asked to determine them given that X and Y are independent. Pause the video here to see if you can find these unknown values. We start off by remembering the following is true for independent events. Let's first find the product of the individual probabilities. Probability of X is 350 over 1000 and the probability of Y is 600 over 1000 and their product is therefore 21 over 100. Next, let's find the probability of X and Y, which is A over 1000. These will be equal if X and Y are independent, and so by equating these, we can solve for A. Once we have A's value, we can find B by subtracting A from 600, then we can find C by subtracting A from 350, and finally, we can find D in two ways, either from subtracting B from 650 or by subtracting C from 400. It's a good idea to find it one way and then check that you are right by finding it the other way. On to questions on the counting principle now. Question 1 is about three-digit codes. Note first you're being asked for the number of codes and then for the probability. Pause here for a moment to read through all the information given and then try the questions. To find the number of three digit codes, place three slots to represent each of the digits. For 1.1.1, where the digits can be repeated, we consider how many options there are for each slot. Because zero is one of the digits and the code cannot begin with a zero, this leaves nine options for this first slot. The second slot can be any of the 10 digits because digits can be repeated and the same for the third slot. And so the number of codes with repetition is 9 times 10 times 10, which equals 900. For 1.1.2, where digits cannot be repeated, the first slot has nine options for the same reason as in the previous situation. There are then nine digits left for the second slot and eight digits left for the third slot. The number of codes without repetition is then 9 times 9 times 8, which is 648. Then for 1.2, for a code to be a multiple of 5, it either needs to end in a 0 or a 5. We know with these codes the first digit cannot be a 0. Let's take two scenarios then. The first where the last digit is a 0 and the second where the last digit is a 5. If we now look further at these two scenarios, in the first there are 9 options for the first digit, 8 options for the second digit and only 1 option for the last digit where the 0 has been assigned to this slot. And then in the second scenario there are 8 options for the first slot because it can't be a 5 or a 0, then 8 options for the second slot and 1 for the last slot, this time it's the 5 that has been assigned to this slot. 
The total number of codes that are a multiple of 5 is therefore 9 times 8 times 1 plus 8 times 8 times 1, which is 136. Now that we've found how many there are, we can calculate the probability by dividing 136 by the total number of codes without repeats, which is then 136 over 648, and this simplifies to 17 over 81. Question 2 is about arranging 13 different travel books on a shelf. Pause here to give this a go. So we are first being asked to calculate the number of different ways the books can be arranged if they are randomly placed on the shelf. And because all 13 books are different, there are 13 factorial ways the books can be arranged. This is because there are 13 options for the first book, then 12 options for the next, 11 for the next, and so on. For 2.2.1, we are asked to determine the probability that the European books are together and the American books are together. In order to find the probability, we need the total number of arrangements, and this we calculated in 2.1, and the number of arrangements with these specific conditions. Let's place the 13 slots for the books. Then let's group the 7 European books together and the 6 American books together. The European books can be arranged 7 factorial times amongst themselves, and the American books 6 factorial times amongst themselves. Then also, either the European books can be first or the American books. So these groups of books can be arranged two factorial times. And so the probability of the European books being together and the American books being together is 7 factorial times 6 factorial times 2 factorial divided by 13 factorial. This then simplifies to 1 over 858. Next, the probability that only the European books are together. Again, let's place the 13 slots and let's group these 7 slots together to represent the European books being together. They can be arranged 7 factorial times amongst themselves and then as we consider the other slots, the group of European books holds 1 place which makes 6 plus 1 which is 7 places that can then be arranged 7 factorial times. And so the probability for this is 7 factorial times 7 factorial over 13 factorial, which is then 7 over 1716. 2.2.3 is a little different. We still place the 13 slots, but this time we need to consider each slot separately. Because there is one more European book than American book, in order for them to alternate all the way to the end, we will need to place a European book first, and so there are seven options to choose from for this first book. Next, we need to place an American book. And so there are six options to choose from here. Now a European book again. But now we only have six options to choose from because we have already placed one European book. The next slot needs to be an American book again. This time we have five to choose from. Then a European book again. Five to choose from now. Then one of the last four American books and so on until there is just one option left for each. The probability of this arrangement is then 7 factorial times 6 factorial. Can you see each of these factorials in here? Then this product divided by 13 factorial, and the answer is 1 over 1716. Question 3 is about the letters of the word equation. Take a moment now to give this question a try. Equation is an eight-letter word, and so the total number of arrangements of its letters without restrictions is 8 factorial, which is 40,320. To find the number of arrangements that can be made if the word starts and ends with a vowel, let's start by placing the eight slots. There are five vowels in the word altogether, and so the first slot has five options, and because one vowel will be placed here, the last slot then has four options. The options that are then left for the rest are six for the second slot, because we have already placed two letters in the first and last slots, then five options, then four, then three, then two, then one. And so the number of arrangements will then be 5 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 times 4, which equals 14,400. 
Then to find the number of arrangements that can be made where Q and U stay together in this order, well, let's place the eight slots and then group these two to represent Q and U staying together. Because the order must remain unchanged, this is then a fixed unit and behaves as a placeholder. We then have seven factorial ways of arranging these slots and so the number of arrangements here is 5040. 3.2 is asking us to determine the probability that a word chosen at random has all the vowels together. There are five vowels in equation, so here are the eight slots. Let's circle these five. The five vowels have five factorial ways they can be arranged within themselves, and then the vowels act as one slot, and so altogether there are four factorial ways of arranging these places. And so the probability of all the vowels being together is 5 factorial times 4 factorial over the total number of arrangements, which we found in 3.1.1, 8 factorial. And the answer is 1 over 14. Question 4 is our last question. These questions are about letter arrangements where the words given have more than one of a particular letter. Pause the video and see how you do with these. In the 12 letter word mathematical, there are two M's, two T's and three A's. You may want to check back to this video if you are unsure what to do here. The total number of arrangements is 12 factorial divided by two factorial for the M's, two factorial for the T's and three factorial for the A's. This gives a total of 19,958,400. If we look now at the word summer, the number of arrangements that can be made is 6 factorial divided by 2 factorial, which is 360. And the probability that a randomly selected word will have an M at each end, well, let's look at the six slots. If the first and last each have an M, then there is only one option for each of those slots. This leaves four factorial ways of arranging the remaining letters in the middle four slots. The probability is therefore 4 factorial divided by 360, which simplifies to 1 over 15. Thank you for watching this video. You have completed the probability video series. Congratulations. Well done for seeing it through. We encourage you to continue with more practice, which you will find plenty of in our study guides. All the best for getting on top of this section and for your exams. Check out the video description below for practice questions from our study guides. If you found this video useful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new episodes. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook to stay on top of the latest TAS news and launches. So that's it for now from the Answer Series, your key to exam success.